Welcome to the Harper Classroom series of instructional videos. This video is how to perform CPM, the critical path method, with Excel. The agenda for this video on how to perform the CPM is the CPM algorithm. And the algorithm is in five parts, so let's start with part number one. Part one is to determine the early start and early finish for each activity. So let's bring in Excel. I've typed in the definition of a project where we have the activities, we have the predecessor activities, and we have the duration of each activity. The critical path method is made up of the early start and early finish, successor activity, late start, late finish, and slack. This is what we'll determine with the CPM algorithm. Step one, activities with no predecessors, the early start is zero. Well, activity one and two have no predecessors, so down here the early start will be zero for each one of them. Step two, for all activities, the early finish is the early start plus the duration. So the early finish here is going to equal the early start plus the duration, but that's going to be true for all activities, so we copy that over. Step three, activities with one predecessor, the early start will be the early finish of the predecessor. Well, activity three has a predecessor of one. So the early start of three will be the early finish of activity one. Activity four has a predecessor of two. So the early start will be the early finish of activity two. Likewise, five has a predecessor of two. So the early finish of two will be the early start of five. Step four. Activities with more than one predecessor, the early start is the max of the early finish of all the predecessors. Activity 6 has two predecessors, 3 and 4. So the early start then is the max of the activities 3 and 4. Activity 7 has three predecessors, 3, 4, and 5. And so the early start will be the max of 3, 4, and 5. And there we've finished the early start and early finish for each activity. But there's two things that are important here. If we take the maximum of all the early finish, that's going to be the time of completion of the project. Second, the early start and the early finish defines the Gantt chart. And we've seen the Gantt chart in other videos. So now part two. Part two is to invert the predecessor activities to obtain the successor activities. So if activity one is the predecessor activity to three, that means three is the successor activity to one. So I go to activity one and I put three as the successor. Activity two is the predecessor to four and five, which means four and five will be the successor to activity two. So I go to activity two and I put activities four and five as the successors. Activity six would be the successor to three and four. So I go to three and four and put six on both of them. And finally, activity seven would be the successor to activities three, four, and five. So three has six and seven, four has six and seven, and five has activity seven. Then activity six has no predecessors, and activity seven has no predecessors. So now, let's look at part three. Part three is determine the late finish and late start for each activity. For step one, activities with no successor activities, the late finish is a time of completion. Well, we see activity six and seven have no successors. So therefore, the late finish is gonna equal the time of completion. Step two. For all activities, the late start equals a late finish minus the duration. For activity seven, the late start is going to equal the late finish minus the duration. But that's going to be true for all the activities, so then I just copy it over. Step three. Activities with one successor, the late finish is the late start of the successor. So activity five has one successor, activity seven. So late finish is gonna be the late start of seven. 
Step 4. Activities with more than one successor, the late finishes the min of the late start of all the successor activities. So activity 4 has two successors, 6 and 7. So therefore, the late finish will be the minimum of the late start of 6 and 7. Again, activity 3 also has two successors, so it's the min of the late start of 6 and 7. Activity 2 has two successors, 4 and 5, so that'll be the min of the late start of 4 and 5. And finally, activity 1 has a successor of 3. That'll be the late start of activity 3. And that's part 3. So now, let's look at part 4. Part 4 is to calculate the slack for each activity, which is the late finish minus the early finish. So here we can have the late finish minus the early finish, and then copy that over for all the activities. Now, step 5. Define the critical activities and the critical path. A critical activity is an activity with a slack of zero. And we can identify the critical activities with an if statement. If the slack equals zero, then we'll just identify it with a yes, otherwise a blank. And we copy that over for each activity and then identify the critical activities. And we can see that our critical activities are activities 1, 3, and 6. So the critical path is defined as all the critical activities. So a critical path is made up of activities 1, 3, and 6. So that's the five parts to the CPM algorithm. But this just represents the mechanics. The CPM algorithm is the basis for many other applications which will be the subject of other videos in the Harper Classroom. So this is the video on how to perform CPM critical path method with Excel. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.